Apple II. We're back here with another MECC disc. This one's called Bluegrass Bluff, 1991. So that might be one of the latest ones I've seen. I think Freedom is probably the latest one I've seen. That was like 93 or something. But uh, all right, let's get our information here. I've actually fiddled with this a little bit, and it's interesting, but I don't know how useful it really is. But all right, instructions. There are three programs in this product. Explore a layer lets you excavate a single culture ugh, culture layer as if there were no layers above it. Excavate the site is more like a real dig. To excavate a whole culture layer, you must clear away all layers above it. Name the culture is a challenge game in which you must determine what culture layer you are on from the artifacts you find. Each layer has one to six levels, which show how long the culture existed. Dig down through the levels with the shovel. The current level is shown at the top of the screen. In Explore Layer and Name the Culture, you can move the left and right to the left and right by pressing left and right arrow keys. When the shovel is selected, this moves you to a new plot. The screen changes plot numbers at the screen top and on the plot stage lower right corner. Okay. You can also move sideways and excavate a site, but you do it differently. You have to back out of the layer and level where you were digging. Man, it's all fucking evolved. All right. After you dig with a shovel, the tips of the unidentified artifacts stick up from the dirt in the dig site screen. Change the tools by pressing the T key. Clean it off with a brush. Move the brush cursor to the artifact and pressing return. Read about the artifacts with the data by pressing D. Okay, so this is what our screen basically lo will look like. So, this is like... Uh, archaeological kind of thing job titles you can earn one of six job titles and rank from lowest to highest they are and I got digger one time so highest job ranks you can achieve are different for each of the three programs the highest possible rank also depends on the level of difficulty you choose and I always play these on like bitch difficulty so you know so there's all these different kind of artifacts you can find, right? So let's just say tools. Meteor meteoric iron axe, right? So there's all different kind of information in here about all this different stuff. You can find all human remains. Poop. There's like doing a dance okay let's get out of here culture information these are all the different cultures so like archaic and it just tells you all this stuff you're probably really supposed to sit down and read all this shit but I'm not going to because if I really covered this and read all this shit I could be here for the rest of my life and I don't want to be teacher information. Alright, here we go. Bluegrass Bluff is a program for students of history and social studies in grades 5 through 9, though older students can use it with good effect. It is designed for use in a setting with many computers. You can use it as a simulation for individual students or for cooperative learning groups. Okay, management settings. Students will learn all this different stuff. Manual can show you all that shit behavioral objectives five people worked on this call that number but they don't exist anymore I think that's a different number than the other ones colors check out alright fucking A let's do it so explore layer Marking site, right, 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 right. Okay, a new archaeological site was found at Bluegrass Bluff. Experts think it will provide lots of information about ancient Native American cultures in Central North America. You have a chance to help with the dig. Be sure to take good notes as you work. If you spend enough time learning at this dig, you may become a very successful archaeologist. As you learn about artifacts, you will increase your score. Finding rare artifacts will increase your score faster than finding common artifacts. 
You can also earn points by reading about the artifacts and cultures and by reviewing your data. At the end of the program, you earn a job title. The number of points you collect determines your title, so go out and find lots of artifacts. Alright, so we'll just do. Uh, we'll do. Oh, fuck it, we'll do transitional. Alright, so here's your. You may start digging here, alright? Turn so you dig, dig up all that grass, and then there's artifact. Use a brush to. So you change your tool. Tool is brush, okay. And then you can pick which places you want to go. Brush that off. You brush off some dirt and found all. Okay, now select what you want to do with this all. Now that you found it, read about it. People use the awl, a sharp needle-like tool to poke holes in leather or skins. They can run, then run a lace through the holes connecting pieces to make moccasins or clothes. When they made tattoos, the awl was probably used to puncture the skin of the person being tattooed. So that's interesting, you know. Catalog and store it. Leave it on the ground. Wow, you'd have to be a real dick to do that. Clothes making tools. read about this artifact. There were several tools in this group. People used needles that were usually made out of bone. They also used awls to lace together pieces of clothing and knives to cut the pieces. They used scrapers and other tools to make hides into leather. Most of this work was done by women. Catalog and store it. Okay. I'll just do this plot and then see if it'll let me finish after that. Stone side scraper. The stone side scraper was a very old tool. People made it with the same technique that they used to make choppers. They used a scraper to take off fat and hair from hides before they tanned them into leather. Catalog and store it. And there's different graphics for everything, which is cool. There's like a little graphic and then a big one. You brush off some dirt and found unfluted point read about it. People use this type of point after the big game period and before the long archaic period. They probably used it on a spear. Flint chipping technique, napping, was much of a higher quality than on the earlier fluted point. The napper took smaller chips from the stone which made the point sharper. Okay, catalog and store it. Really, why would you not save any of that stuff if you found it? Deer bones. Okay, maybe you don't want deer bones, but let's read about it anyway. It looks like a dog bone. This was an animal was very important for its meat and hide. Early people also made many tools from deer bones and antlers. These tools included fish hooks and needles. Frontier people also hunted deer and ate venison. Many people still do today. And then up there at the top, it tells you, you know, the size, the type, and then the different cultures that it applies to. And this one, like, that's almost all of them, right? So, you know, kind of, kind of cool. Catalog and store it. Okay. Um, escape. Escape to the main menu. You really want to quit the Explorer layer program? I do. You earned a score of twelve. Job rank is beginner. I did that for like an hour last time. I, see, look, there's me in there. 236. That was a long time ago. I think that was like in October or something. It's December right now. Excavate the site. I think this one I think shows like a cross section of a hill. I don't really remember. I just remember I found a whole shitload of uh, slave shackles. Okay, same description there. Okay, you may select a layer, so I will go about here. So 
Surface of Hopewell at plot one. Alright, fuck it, dig. Wow, look at all that shit. Alright. Change my tool. Brush off artifacts to identify them. Deer bones. You get points for reading about it, so I'm just going to go ahead and look at it real quick. Same thing. And see, I did. Last time was archaic, so there's arc in there. This time I'm doing. I didn't, didn't even see what it was, but hop is what I'm doing. Hope well. Okay. Catalog and store it. I'll just do one screen. God damn, lots of deer bones. Maybe I'll do two. Catalog and store it. I don't think it gives you points for reading about the same thing like 12 times. Clothes making tools. Alright. Read about it. Same description. See, but it's not as many not as many cultures there. So, you know. Engraved tablet. Oh, that's fancy looking. Looks like a butterfly. See what the the better detailed version looks like. Engraved tablets usually had very elaborate designs on one side. The designs were of birds, people, or geometric figures. Scratch marks on the back of some stones might be where people sharpen tattooing awls. They may have... Wow, my brain totally just fucking fell asleep. They may have used the engraved side to paint, put paint on the skin for the tattoo design. And they drew geometric shapes while they were on the phone, man. Come on. Catalog and store it. Alright. Bird bone whistle. Wow. So there's all kinds of stuff in here. Read about this artifact. Bird bone whistle was either a simple whistle or a more complex flute like musical instrument. People used a bird bone because it was already hollow. That's a good idea. They carved holes in it to produce different tones. Native Americans still use similar whistles in some religious ceremonies. So. Okay, so they say Native Americans here. But Freedom came out after this, and Freedom just straight up calls them like engines or something, you know? It's like all offensive. What a weird, what a weird time for this company. Getting all super involved with this like later era. Like this is for older kids. Alright, engraved seashell. They like scrimshaw. People in some cultures engrave seashells with figures and designs. Design might be a bird, a geometric design, or a human hand with an eye in the palm. Like that Faith No More video. Okay, most often the design was a full body human figure. These shells, usually from an animal called a conch, came from the Gulf of Mexico. Full body human figure, so it was like precursor to the adult magazine. Yo, man, I'll trade you this like buffalo hide for this seashell with the naked lady on it. Cut out. Cut out as a piece of artwork. It is often in the shape of a mammal, a bird, or a serpent. It might also be in the shape of a human hand or head. Is this supposed to be a hand? I guess so. People often made cutouts from mica, imported from the southern Appalachians, or from copper from the Great Upper Lakes area. Hmm. Okay. Catalog it, because that's interesting. Alright, and then we'll move to. I'll move to another layer here. Oh wait, no, a different plot. No, you know what? Let me go deeper. There are no more artifacts here. Let's go... Let's go here. Dig. Oh, there's not that many. Okay. Brush this shit off. Mastodon bones. Mastodon! Pterodactyl! Tree browsing mastodon was a relative of the mammoth, a larger animal. It lived until about 6000 BC. It looked much like the smaller modern elephant but was very hairy. Groups of people, usually men, hunted it with spears or darts. They often trapped the animal in a bog first. Poor guy. And then. Zach had a mastodon and he practiced a martial art of hip hop keto for Zordon. Okay, um, unfluted point. Is this the same thing that I found before? Yeah, right? Yeah, okay. 
catalog and store it. So I don't understand, you just get a high score by doing all this shit? Shellfish. So if you just went through the whole thing and dug everything up, you get 10 million points. Now yeah, select, so okay, read about it. Shellfish include mollusks and crustaceans, people at Blue, bleh, people at Bluegrass Bluff. Man, try saying that fucking five times fast. Had freshwater species only. Shells of a certain mollusk, the mussel, have been found in many inland places. People ate mussels until a wetter climate made rivers too wide and deep for people to get shellfish. Okay. Great. Flake knife. Flake knife is probably the first type of knife. People often made it from a special kind of rock, often obsidian, imported from the Rocky Mountains. When they hit the rock just right, a long thin flake broke off. When done correctly, the edge and tip of the flake were very sharp. Obsidian, huh? You can't do shit with that in Minecraft, can you? Just make the gates. Bighorn bison bones. Let me see what the bison looks like. Yeah, that dude's cool. Bighorn bison lived until the end of the last ice age. Its horns were very wide and dangerous for early hunters. People often drove herds over cliffs to kill them for meat. This type of slaughter became less common after the bow and arrow was invented. You know, when I see shit like that, like that about like they put the the mastodon in the bog or they ran all these dudes off the cliff. Like, who had to carry all that shit back home? Was that like the older guys ran the shit off the cliff and then they made the, like the young guys you know, get your ass down there. If you want to be in the tribe, you got to carry all this shit up this cliff. Fuck you, I'm going to go be a nomad later. Alright, well, that's enough of this. I'm done. Yes. 29 gives you a job rank of beginner. Alright. Name the culture. Oh, geez. I'm probably going to tank this hard. I don't even remember this. Marking the site. Okay. I'm good until it wants you to know some stuff. Then I'm in trouble. Okay. No artifacts. Hmm. Well. Easy. Damn, I gotta dig this shit up, too. Well, at least there's only two. Okay. Horse bones. Read about this artifact. Horse originated in America, migrated to Eurasia over an early Bering Strait land bridge, became extinct in the Americas after the last ice age, Native Americans caught some horses after the Spanish brought the animals back to the Americas. Horses totally changed the Indian way of life. See, now they say Indian. Clove, fern, plun, sieve. Alright. Catalog and store it. Dog bones. What's a dog look like? He's gonna be like a little beagle. Well, fucking like a wolf. Nearly every group of people on Earth domesticated the dog. Native Americans had the dog from about 5000 BC. They used it as a pet and a guard animal, as people do today. Most Native Americans used dogs to pull heavy loads. Many Indian nations also ate dog meat. Okay, catalog and store it. Escape. Oh, uh. Select N to name the culture. Alright, N. N to name the culture. Plantation. Sorry, but your answer is not correct. Son of a bitch. N. Frontier. Sorry, but your answer is not correct. Well, fucking. I guess it's gotta be the last one then. Civ. 243 gives you a job rank of digger. 
Damn, look at that. All up in your guts, Jim. By getting shit wrong, too. Alright, so let's see the high score list. Well, the fact that I have, what is that, four of those spots? That means I think me and Bluegrass Bluff have spent enough time together. I think this is a good disc if you really wanted to learn a lot about different shit that you could have dug up at places and just, you know, factoids about different parts of history, at least American history. I mean, there's a little bit of shit in there about, like, Bering Strait, so, you know, that kind of includes, what is that, Russia that that comes across of, Upper Asia, whatever, but, uh, as far as it being, like, a game or being fun, it's kind of not. I would rather just have a list of shit to read about rather than having to dig it up, because... The other time I played, I seriously pulled, like, probably, I don't know, ten in a row were slave shackles, and that was plantation level, you know, so of course that makes sense, but it was like the random nature of it. Just show me a list of the shit and let me read about it, and then quiz me on it, you know, but yeah, that's it for Bluegrass Bluff, so, you know, it, you're interested in digging and you don't want to go dig up your yard I guess you could try this one but it's pretty much everywhere you go in there is pretty much more of the same thing so yeah that's it for now thanks for watching